There's sheep in here. They look really young, don't they? Can you guys come and have a look? Come and have a look. This is what we do. Okay, come and have a look here. Yeah. So we're just bearing witness. We just um, see the innocence in the animal's eyes and um, they obviously don't know what's going, going to happen to them when they get into there. But this is the last interaction they have with you know, human beings here. So we just bear witness, we take some footage of them. Okay. And then we show people this is your food. I had a face. I didn't want to die. Okay, and they're getting slaughtered against their will. They don't. They don't want to be killed. Okay, and these beings are just like. You, do you have dogs and cats at home? No. Okay. Do you have? Do you, you know, you care for animals. Do you have a dog and cat? Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. So we think that if people see the animals connected with them, they're less likely to want to consume their body parts. You know. Would you agree with that, though? We eat plants. We eat plants. I'm just having trying to have a conversation with him and try to stay trying to stay calm and have a calm, rational conversation with him. I didn't mean for him to get for it to get like that, but it's usually when you challenge someone's belief system, and he's been doing this since he's 16 years old. So there's, in his mind, this is just the way it is. But I'm trying to open up an alternative in his mind because we have other things to eat, and he thinks that this is all we've got to eat. We have to eat animal flesh. But we're living proof that you don't. We've got meat alternatives, we've got dairy alternatives, we've got every alternative you can think of. So this is unnecessary practice. And he is just a, he's just a product of a society that thinks this is okay. He's not a criminal in my eyes. He's just been conditioned to violence. So he's in a job, he's been pushed into work from a young age that, you know, he, he probably wouldn't have chosen to do that. You know, it's just something society has pushed him into because consumers want to eat animal bodies, so that's why they're in there. And would you use the same approach to every other you would Oh, it would usually be a lot calmer, calmer, uh, logical, asking questions like, "Do you think that this is necessary? Do you think we can? Do you think we can? Do you think we need to do this if we've got alternatives?" You know, and it's just it's just getting them to think. You know. What's the usual it's, everyone's different. There's, some people have a defense mechanism, they're just like, they get really, or some people know that, know that it's wrong and they're the ones that get really angry or upset, you know? So, how do you feel about what's going on here? Like, just this demonstration. Oh, you guys are out yeah. there and you're, you're doing your best yeah. for what you in. Do you think it's necessary that animals have, have be, be going to these places? Do you think it's necessary? Do they have a yeah. I know that you're in your uniform, but. Let's just talk about it from a legal perspective. If you've seen someone hurting an animal, zapping them, stabbing them on the side of the road, you would probably intervene for animal cruelty, yeah? Yeah, but it's the, it's the, it's the yeah, but it's the same crime. But it's just, this is behind industry walls, and that's out in the street, out in public for you to see. So you would intervene legally if an animal was being abused on the side of the road or in someone's house, okay? But it's, completely different context. But it's the same act. Yeah, so but if we used a, an immoral act in a different context, it would still be the same immoral act. So same rape act. would still be rape, no matter where it is, whatever context, it would still be the, the act that's immoral. The being that's being abused, it's the victim that's being abused. Whether it's in there, out here, you would stop them out here, but in there because it's industry, you don't have a legal right because what they're doing is legal. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Slavery was once legal, yeah? Was it still immoral? Even though in the context, in that time, in, in that time, it was legal, wasn't it? You wouldn't go in and stop slave owners from owning uh, black slaves, would you? Because back then it was legal, yeah? But it was still immoral. The context has changed now. Yeah, human slavery is illegal, but it's still immoral no matter what context you put it in, you know what I mean? But it's an interesting thing, thing to think of, what's actually legal and what's moral. And how long have you been doing this for? I've been vegan for four years. Four years? Yeah. And have you been out for the four years then? No, Same just in the last year or so. What was your favourite change? Someone said something to me and he said, when you eat suffering and death, it becomes you. And he said, when you eat the life-giving plants, that's healthy, it's got the nutrients and vitamins and minerals. But if you eat an animal, the body of an animal who didn't want to die, okay, you're taking on that suffering and that fear and that violence and it manifests as disease in your body. Okay, and I didn't understand it until I realised heart disease is the number one killer 
on earth, more than wars and cancer, mm -hmm. okay? Heart disease is killing people. The cholesterol is only found in animal foods. Okay, so we're eating these animals and it's killing us and that's when it really like sunk in for me. When you eat suffering and violence and fear, manifest in your body and that's what changed me. And that's how you see it now? Yeah, I see it. And I, and I'm, I, like all of us human beings, majority of human beings don't like to see animals get hurt. We know they're innocent. They're more innocent than, you know, they're as innocent as children basically. They're vulnerable. They don't know what they're doing. They get led into these places. They're scared, okay? So people can eat their bodies. And if people seen these scared animals going into these places, do you think they want to eat their burger after that? When I, if I offer you a vegan burger, it tastes not much different, okay? And a burger with scared animals' bodies in there, which one are people going to choose? Rational people. You know what I mean? Well, which one would you choose? That's the kind of the aim, the goal is to kind of show that point and put your point across like that. The goal is to, the goal is to create enough awareness so that consumers like yourselves will choose a different option in the supermarket, okay? And if we get enough people like yourselves to wake up and go, okay, I can make a choice in the supermarket where I grab soy milk or the breast milk of a cow who suffered and died because of that milk, because they all get killed. 50% of the beef in this country comes from dairy cows when they're spent. Okay, they have their children taken away, they're killed, the children are killed, boys are killed, okay? They all get killed. Now you can go like this, I'm gonna get the dairy milk in the supermarket, or you can go, I'm gonna try almond milk, soy milk, or rice milk. There's a whole, there's a whole Alpro that Sainsbury's, there's, there's a whole row of vegan milks. Why do we need the one that was meant for her child, that was taken away from her? You know what I mean? So, consumer demand. You buy the soy milk, dairy milk goes down, they, they, the farmers change industry. They start um, cultivating crops to make soybeans and <coughs> rice milk and plant-based alternatives. So we don't, we don't want farmers out of a job. We don't want these guys out of a job. We just want to change the, the job, change the industry. Know what I mean? And I hear you've been all over the world doing it. Yeah. 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 I want to promote peace. That's all. Yeah. I was thinking more a peaceful world. And this here is just—it's violence. It's and it's unnecessary violence. And most people are good people. Like you know, police officers yourself. You probably got into this job because you want to help people. You know, you want to do something good that's righteous. And I respect that. And that's all we're doing here. This is something that we can all we all have power in. We can't stop people's spouses from being abused by a drunk husband. You can't stop all of that. But you don't contribute to it yourself, okay? And if you see it, you intervene, okay? I can't stop all animals being slaughtered, but I don't contribute to it myself. And if I see it, I try my best to intervene in the legal framework of what we can do. And the best thing, way I can do that is to talk to people and say, this is what you're doing, wake up, you know? And is there anywhere in the world that you think that the animals aren't as well as the kids do? If they end up in a place like this and come out chopped up into pieces, that is ill treatment. But I just mean the conditions leading up to that. That's welfareist. We're not we're not about animal welfare. Yeah. Okay, so treating animals kindly before you stab them to death is not um, moral. It's not humane. Animal welfare is looking after the conditions for the, the being before they're killed. Yeah, and that's, that's not. What the end saying. point is what we're the, the point that we're look, what we're about is looking at animals like they're a product for us, like they're an object to be used. That's exploitation and that's what we're against. So when we look at animals, um, any use of an animal, whether it's welfare, standard use, you know, none of these places adhere to the, even the welfare standards that they're supposed to, but that's not what we hear about. We hear about them being used at all. Yeah. So not, not so much welfare, but more exploitation. You look at a, a, a living being like they're a product and we have a problem, don't we? Like if I started looking at everyone's pet dogs like, ooh, you know, they're, they're, they're here for us to eat. I'm gonna skin them dogs and, you know, eat them for my dinner. You'd be like, wait a second, dogs feel pain, they suffer, they, they get excited, they get hungry, they get tired. No different to any of the animals in here. No different. And did you guys have anything to do with the take on the horse meat and found animals two years ago? Horse meat found in, 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 within cow meat is not an issue for me. The issue is that there's any animal being used for their meat. Cow meat, horse meat, it doesn't matter what animal it is, you know? It's just the fact that it's the animal is the issue. We draw an arbitrary line between species, okay? It's called speciesism, where we say dogs, cats, koalas, all these animals can be cared for and looked after and, you know, you know, cows, chickens, pigs, lambs and fish, who cares about them? They're food animals, they're to be farmed and put into slaughterhouses so we can eat them. This is just, in, in those animals' eyes, they're all the same. They all want to live, they all feel pain. But we've drawn the line and we've said, these are for using, exploiting, wearing and eating. These are for caring for. Who are we to say that? There's no difference in the eyes of those animals. It's the same as racism. You say, oh, you know, black people, 
you know, that we can use them as slaves. Then they don't they don't have the intellect as us, and they they were put here for us to use to to pick our cotton fields and stuff like that. You know, that's just how they used to think about black people. Okay, this is racism. This is how we view animals now. Same same um, shallow discrimination. movement on earth okay it's growing exponentially by the year because we you live in a nation of animal lovers yeah we love our animals okay now now by their own moral code they they have to be consistent by that and what we're, all we're doing is waking people up to say hey i believe you're an animal lover but your actions don't reflect um your beliefs that's all it is people's actions aren't lining up so i see you're, you're there in your film and it's education based okay so people aren't educated and they've been they've been conditioned by advertising society um your parents have passed it on it's within it's within the nutrition system they were saying yeah you need meat for protein we're just educating people on why these are false facts are false uh why industry plays a massive part on trying to hypnotize society into thinking that these are food when they're not we're just showing people hey if you're an animal lover you have to be consistent with that and you know not eat their bodies because if you're condemning animals to slaughterhouses that's not loving them and it's pretty easy because normal logical rational compassionate people <coughs> can wake up fairly easy just point out a few things and they go wow you're right i am a hypocrite which is my first realization i realized i'm a hypocrite yeah yeah any thoughts on that I find it fascinating to hear that you obviously four years ago was when you became vegan and yeah, I actually used to be. I, yeah. I used to be got mixed up with the wrong people. I had a pretty, pretty hard uh, life, and then I changed. I changed my life, and I wanted to give back and help people. And I felt that the most innocent beings and the most persecuted beings are the ones that no one really talks about, and they're the the, the animals in here. So they're, they're they're the ones who need it the most. Because we can all collectively agree as a society that women deserve rights. Black people deserve rights, different races. Um, human beings deserve fundamental rights of freedom, liberty, not to be harmed, used, exploited. We can all agree on that as a society. But who's going to agree that cows deserve the same? Maybe your dog, yeah, you agree that dogs don't, shouldn't be harmed, should be cared for. But who's going to agree that a pig does? This is why they need my help the most, because we can't even collectively agree that they have moral value. And they're, they're sentient, just like us. They see through their eyes, they hear with their ears, they get scared, okay? They don't want to die, they want to live, they have families that get separated, okay? Can you imagine having your child taken off of you? This is, the, this is their life every single day, okay? And I'm not even exaggerating, this is exactly what animal agriculture does. They breed and forcibly, they rape animals, breed them into existence, steal their children off them and exploit them for their bones, their body, uh, their flesh and their skin. It's good that you can travel the world to do that. Yeah. Well, it's happening all over the world, but... Thanks. Thanks, I appreciate that. Yeah, just trying to reach the kids. Kids love animals, don't they? Like, they love... They would love to see pigs in a sanctuary. And the parents bless them, but they're just misinformed and they're feeding pieces of animals to their children and their children if they knew do wake up the world thanks guys we're gonna head off no worries thank you very much yeah i'll give you both a little card it's just got some documentaries on the back this is my link if you write that link in you can do a challenge right it's 22 days it's just a vegan challenge and you can do it on facebook and they mentor you through uh inboxes so it's, you know, you can just give it a go, see if you like it, try some soy milk, um, uh, I prefer almond or coconut milk or something like that. You know, just have a go, see if you like it. On you guys. <laughs>